Hi everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Swift Crate Customs and in today's video I'm going to share how you can easily work with digital patterns and add those to a shape in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software. Everything I'm showing you is available in the Leonardo Design Studio basic version of the software and we are going to create a design using the Caesar Easy Color DTV that is a printable HTV that you can use with your home printer. Here's a look at the finished project. We will go step by step in the design process in Caesar Leonardo Design Studio. So I'm going to start by opening up a new page and we will begin from the very beginning. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a shape file. All of the files I am using will be linked in the description below this video. So you could easily follow along with the same exact uh, designs I am using. I'm going to come up to File, Open, and then I am going to select this Paint Brush Stroke Keychain Bundle, and I'm going to change my view so I can see that a little bit better. And then I'm just going to select one that I would like to use, and I forgot which one I used in the original. We're just going to select this 33. The, this is the PNG file and here is the SVG file. So either way, you could open the PNG file and have it traced, or you could open the SVG file and it's already a cut file. So we are going to work with the SVG file. I'm going to bring it in as a cut only, and then choose next. I click apply, and I have this design on my design mat. So I'm just going to resize this down for approximately the size shirt I would be putting it on and you can decide with your whatever shape you're using whether you want to increase the size of that in any shape or form sometimes you can um, scale it up or um, lengthwise or widthwise without distorting the image too much it's completely up to you so we'll leave this let's just bump this down a little bit um, maybe about 10 inches we'll see just depends on the size shirt you are working with and what size you prefer for your designs I'm going to use file save and I'm going to save this file. So I always have a copy of it just in case something happens. Next, I'm gonna open the pattern. And so I'm going to come up to file, open, and I'm going to select um, this alcohol ink seamless pattern. The alcohol inks are amazing for the different colors and you can select any design that you would want. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose alcohol ink seamless pattern. Now here you can select in this case either print and cut that's going to automatically turn on your registration marks or it will work as a background image as well. I'm going to use background image just because it's a little bit easier to be seen on the screen in the video but either one would work the same way. You do want to make sure that the resolution is 300 DPI. I've been working in my software, so it I have already changed it and it remembers that. When you first open your software, it's going to say auto default. You want to make sure to choose 300 DPI so it opens at the size it was created at. So I'm going to select the 300 DPI and choose background image and next. Now you can see on the screen, it's very light and it still automatically turned on the print and cut job. That's okay, we'll work with this. The reason it's very light is because it hits the very edges of the border of the 12 by 12 that is on my design mat. So if I were to just shrink this down just a little bit and move it to the center, let's just center this, you'll see, oh, page size. Let's just uncheck print and cut so this is easier. We will turn it into a print and cut before we're done. Since I just decreased that just a little bit, it now fits fully on my page. So you can see those full colors come out. And that's the reason why it was a lighter color. Anything outside of the boundaries of your cut border, that's when you get into the selection being grayed out or appearing transparent. Now, when you have a PNG file, and you bring it in at 300 dpi that brings it in at the original size you do not typically want to scale up from that size or you can um, get low resolution or pixelation you can scale down with no issues whatsoever or usually whatsoever 
um, but scaling up can create problems. So keep that in mind when you're working with it. So the easiest way for me to show this is I'm going to um, close this little window here and I'm going to come over into the layers panel. This is going to be able to give you an idea of the different layers that are stacked on top of each other and how they work. So currently the background is on top of the shape. I'm going to grab this and just drag it above in the layers panel. And now you can see my shape is on top of this pattern. You could place this shape anywhere you choose to along this pattern. So I have already created this shirt and now I'm recording for the steps of the video. So my final product may look a little bit different than what you will see on the screen here, but it is the same exact process that I took. So I can scale this down a little bit so I could get more of the colors to appear in my shape you can, you can simply choose and select that. First, I'm actually going to hit undo. I'm gonna bring it back to kind of the original size. And then I'm gonna control C, control V. I'm gonna move a copy off to the left-hand side just so I have a copy that is close to the original size. Now I can scale this down as desired. And then decide where I would like this to go. And you could rotate it, you could do all kinds of um, different things here, depending on what your style is. When you're ready to fill it with the pattern, you want to make sure that your shape is on top of the digital pattern. And then I'm going to left click and drag across everything to select both of those objects. So here, I'll just turn this one off. So this is the copy. We have the two objects. They are selected. They are grayed out. So they are both selected at the same time. And then I'm going to come down here into the icon that's next to the star. Now, in Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software, the last used icon is what appears in the toolbar. So you won't always match someone else's video or someone else's software. So I have been using this a lot lately in creation of the class. And you want to use the intersect, which is a basic Leonardo function. It was moved to basic um, quite a ways back in 2024. So you can simply select this icon and then in the pop out window you can select intersect that is going to fill with the pattern and then i can turn this one back on unhide it and we still have our original pattern so if you wanted to create another shape then you can do that if you do that i would control z and the first thing i would do is i like to make copies so i'm going to make a copy of that shape and i can pull that off to the side as well so then I just have the, those originals off to the side and you could hide that if you wanted to as well. So now we can see we have both of those. I am going to left click, drag across and do the same steps I just did. So this icon here, choose intersect. So now we have our pattern has filled our shape. I'm gonna come up to file, save. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to add some text to this like I shared in my original design. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a font that's called Angista Script and it will be linked in the description below. And I'm simply going to type out dream. So I used a saying called dream, create, inspire. And with this font, you do have glyphs. So if I check the little box down here in the show glyphs panel on or in the show glyphs, on the text panel. I then have all of these options and glyphs are part of the font file. So it will depend on what font you are working with. You can easily change out the letters. I could highlight the M and come down to the bottom and I can get the little tail for my M. I can highlight the D and I can use the tail on the front end of Dream. So now I have this text and what I'm going to, going to do is I'm going to leave it at this size so I can resize everything. Um, it's just going to depend on your design creation and what fits best for you, but it's really difficult to see that there. So I'm going to come up to, over to the properties panel, choose color picker. And then what I'm going to do is click on this little square and then you get a select color box that pops up with some very basic colors. 
I'm going to be using white, so hopefully that will show up a little bit better on the screen. We can come in here and I can zoom in so it shows a little bit better. It does show me what the text style is in the bottom here. I am going to control C, control V and make a copy. And then I'm going to do that one more time. That way it retains the properties of the fill color and everything like that. I can simply just double click on it and then I can create my new design. So I'm going to choose create. You can start with just the glyphs and then you can choose the tails as well. So there's multiple ways you can work with this. Then I'm going to click apply. It's going to change that text. Double click here and I'm going to choose inspire I and I'm simply just typing the rest of the letters and then come down here to my tail. Click apply. So I can easily create with my text. So I have these text options. If I'm going to rotate them, I do want to rotate them at the same um, angle. And that's why I selected all three at the same time. Now your design is probably going to look completely different than my design, but this gives you an idea. And if you do want to create the same type of design, those supplies are linked in the description below. And I can move this around. Now currently it is set as a cup file. I'm actually going to increase this one to span across. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select create, hold my shift key down, select the background, and I'm going to see how it looks when I center that. That looks pretty good. And then I can do the same thing here with inspire, just get this how I would like it. Um, let's just decrease this just a bit. You could spend all day fiddling with designs. So currently this is what we have. I'm going to choose file, save, save often. And then let's zoom out here to a hundred percent and it takes a little a few seconds to save. So now I have this dream create inspire. It is currently a cut file. So if I come over here and I choose send design because I have a pattern, um, first off, let's click off of it to deselect it. Choose send design. It doesn't show anything on the screen here. And if I choose send, all I have, I have a background that's going to print, but it's not going to cut. And my text is going to cut. That's not what I want. So I need to tell Leonardo what I want it to do. So I'm going to select this entire thing and I want to make the entire design a print and cut. So I'm going to come down to the bottom toolbar and choose build contours. And then it gives me this border around the outer edge. That is exactly what I want. I'm going to choose print and cut logo. I'm going to select holes here just because I have some of this distressed holes and I want to keep those. It will co be completely dependent on your material if you want to have that distressed look or not. And it's dependent on the design if it has that. I'm going to use it and I'm going to click apply and then I have my print and cut. So I'm going to come up here to set up my page size for the print and cut. Click on artboard and I have print and cut selected here. It defaulted to A4. I just need to change this to US letter so it's the correct size and then turn my page marks on. So these are my default page marks. I'm going to zoom in on this page here. And then you can see the design is sort of grayed out. That is because it is outside of my print and cut borders. I'm going to select everything on this design and then just use the green handle at the top, hold my shift key down, and I can rotate that exactly to the 90 degrees. And then I'll move this down in here. And it looks like my design is just a little bit bigger um, because of the size I created it. I can simply grab that rotate handle again, should be able to kind of angle this and see if I can get it in the borders. There we go. And this is going to be dependent on your printer and what size you can print. I will probably just decrease this just a little bit because it's simply for the example. So now I have black registration marks. If you ever see red registration marks, that means something is wrong. So you want to work on and see what needs to be to do to fix that. 
going to click on send design, choose send, and then you have your printed artwork. And then once you have printed that, you can set up on your Caesar Juliet or Romeo, and you can cut the contour on that. So here is a look at my finished design. As I mentioned, I've already completed this prior to recording the actual video showing the steps. So my design that is on the shirt is a little bit different than what we created here. Every design you do can be different. I'm going to click back here on this background. You can see with any background pattern, you could place your shape anywhere along that. So you could have multiple possibilities of the finished project. So here's a look at the cutting process of Caesar Juliet with the Caesar Easy Color DTV. I have loved working with the DTV. It is a great option for being able to print on heat transfer vinyl at home, and I've had great success, but I do follow all of the care instructions that are provided by Caesar, which include printing at normal quality and waiting 24 hours after pressing to wash, washing before wearing to remove any excess ink that your printer may have laid down. Here is a look at the finished shirt after it was pressed. And I also used the Caesar Easy Color DTV to make earrings out of wood blanks that coordinate and match with the same pattern using the same techniques. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and check out the description of the video below for additional information and links to the supplies I used. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.